Welcome to the Pageantry Podcast. And today's very special Pageantry Podcast guest, calling in the National Marketing Director and Contestant Coordinator of Royal International Miss, Mr. Jeff Leforce. Good morning, Jeff. Good morning, Mr. Dunn. How are you? I am doing awesome as we're all sitting here trying to find something to do with this uh, stay-at-home orders that most of us have within our cities and states at the moment, so I'm very happy and honored that you took the time to call in today. Absolutely. I've got nothing but time right now. That is all of us. So we're going to talk a little bit about Royal International Miss, and of course you're very familiar with it since you're the marketing director and contestant coordinator. How long has Royal International Miss been producing national pageants? Actually, 2021 will be our 10-year anniversary, so this summer will be our ninth international pageant. That is awesome. 10-year anniversary. That is quite the milestone in the glamour lifestyle industry, so congratulations, and I'm sure I will be there and look forward to seeing you all again. Thank you. We, we look forward to it. Our international director, Sharon, is making plans to make it bigger and better than ever, so we're looking forward to it for sure. What was her premise for founding Royal International Miss? Well, our uh, international director, Sharon Nordquist, was a pageant mom. She had a daughter who won an international title for another pageant system, and there were just things that, that she was like, man, I, I love what this does for, for young girls, and she kind of took things that she liked from the experiences her daughter had and said, I, I want to do a pageant system where I can provide that opportunity. And so she just kind of put it together, and I think even to this day that's still what drives her. Um, when she's putting together parties for the for the event or, you know, looking for judges or how the shows are going to look, everything goes back to how is that going to be experienced by the contestants? Mm-hmm. How is that going to be experienced by their parents? So that's definitely her driving force for why she started it, and I think still her driving force for the decisions she makes now. How many age divisions are within Royal International Miss? Well, it's a little bit of a tricky question. Um, there are seven age divisions. However, we have two international titles in each age division. We have our actual Queen's Division title, and then we have a separate track called the Royal International Miss Role Model Program. And we have a winner in each age division for both of those titles. So we have 14 international title holders. And those are all done at the state level as well as the national level? Yes. You can be crowned a state title holder in all seven divisions for either of those titles. What are the required areas of competition, and how are they judged? The required areas of competition for the Queen's Division are introduction, which is about a 30-second little speech about themselves, just basically things they're interested in, things they're excited about, um, interesting facts about them. Then the girls go directly from the stage after their introduction. Their group goes straight into interview with our judges. Our Princess and Sweetheart Divisions have round-robin judging with each judge, um, and then the preteen and older, it is a panel style interview. The judges have nothing in front of them about the girls. They take notes during their introduction and talk to them specifically about them and the things they learned about them during their introductions. That interview obviously is required. And then we have on stage fun fashion and evening gown competition. Those are the required competitions for the division. And then for role model, we actually take their introduction score and their evening gown score from the regular division. And then there is a separate panel interview with judges that are more um, community service-based that ask them about their community service involvement and that type of thing that they're, they're excited about. They also do a scrapbook and resume and answer a couple of essay questions about their community service involvement, things that they would like to be implementing if they were happen to win that title. Our international role models actually select our international service project for the following year. So that's one of the things they talk about in that interview. Can you tell us about the optional competitions? Absolutely. We have a ton of optional competitions that basically give pretty much anyone something to enter. We have several stage competitions, like the, the normal casual wear we have talent. We also have something called Purple Passion, which is anything that you can think of that's purple. Um, it was actually designed as a fundraiser for our nonprofit organization, Dream Royal. 
Um, we have a top model competition, which I think is really cool. We bring in photographers from New York and different places, and the girl goes out and does a two-minute photo shoot with the photographer with no instructions. The judges are there watching the photo shoot to see how they react and how they pose in front of the photographer. And then the second stage of that competition is basically a catwalk, fashion walk on stage on how they would do a fashion show. And then the judges obviously score that, and the two portions go together to the top model for each age division. And the cool thing about that is they get the, all of the contestants get the pictures from the photo shoot. So that's kind of a, a two-in-one for me. We also have something new that I love. It's our international costume contest. So if you think of Miss Universe and the national costumes that they have, the international costumes, um, we started that a couple of years ago, and we absolutely love it. It's fantastic. Some of the costumes we get from, from the various states, but especially some of the international contestants, I just think, how do they even get those costumes to the country? <laughs> but um, those are lots of fun. We also have a lot of free optionals, which are essay contests for scholarship money, the scrapbook competition, which is free to enter. We, of course, have things like photogenic and portfolio that I forgot to mention earlier. So there are a lot of ways for girls to get involved with our optional competitions. Excellent. Royal International Miss actually began as a national scholarship pageant, but has now grown over the past few years into a true international destination. Absolutely. Yes, that's something that I'm actually very proud of um, as the marketing director and contestant coordinator, because when I came on board with the, the organization about seven years ago, all of our contestants were from the United States. And I thought, you know, it's always been called Royal International Myth. And I thought, what a great opportunity to grow the pageant internationally. And we have grown every single year that I've been involved with the pageant. And we have girls that represent countries all over the world, from Canada to the United Kingdom to South Africa and Australia and countries in between. Last year, we had about 15 countries represented. And there are some girls who represent other countries who actually live here in the United States. We've had students who are from other countries who go to college here in the United States that represent their home country. Um, we've had a few girls who are first-generation Americans who live here and that live very much live their home country's culture at home and speak the native language and that type of thing. But the majority of our international country representatives are actually from those other countries. We have directors in, like I said, the United Kingdom and Australia and South Africa and all, all around the world. So, And we're always looking for at-large contestants from countries that aren't represented yet. So, you know, if there are girls out there that live in a country that we don't have an international pageant at um, that want to represent them, you know, we take them as an at-large title. So we're really excited. That's something we really have loved about the growth of our pageant. What can someone expect while attending the Royal International Miss pageant? Fun. That's one thing I, I kind of mentioned earlier, but Sharon and our entire staff, our primary goal is that when a contestant comes to Royal International Miss, whether they live, leave with the crown on their head or not, that they had an amazing experience. And not just the contestant, but their families as well. Their parents that come, siblings that come. We do parties every, almost every night. And when I say a party, I don't mean like, you know, some pizza and everybody sit around and kumbaya. It is a full-on prom um, 90% of the time. If you think about how maybe your high school was decorated for the ballroom or the gym for high school prom, that's pretty much what our parties look like. No detail is spared when it comes down to, you know, table decorations and photo ops and performances and just the entire experience. So that's always lots of fun. And I will say something that I absolutely love about our, our pageant system is that the girls really get along and build a sisterhood and kind of grow that throughout the year building up to the pageant. So that when they get to the pageant, they um, really enjoy spending time with each other. We have rehearsals all week so the girls get to hang out together in a non-competitive atmosphere while they're learning opening number and that kind of stuff. And then we have girls who return every year obviously hoping that they will win a title at some point, but they come back every year just to see their friends that they've made from, from years past. As a matter of fact, our international Ms. winner this year, Victoria Bartley, this was her eighth year competing with Royal International Ms. So that tells you she's been there since the beginning and has competed, you know, as she's been going through. And this year won the title. 
but she came back every year just because she loved the experience and loved getting to see her friends that she's made over the years. And you brought up some great information about the staging, which is just, in my view, and of course, I've being here in Orlando with your national finals, I have the pleasure and honor of being able to attend all of them. Talk about some of the staging. And last year was kind of unique with the red carpet and then the Royal Oscars. Months and months of preparation go into the staging of Royal International Miss. We've worked with several different staging companies. The pageant itself takes place in a ballroom, but when you're watching the pageant, it doesn't feel like a ballroom. The stage and the lighting and backdrops and all of the stuff that that is put up is very professional, very expensive, so really put on to make sure that it's a good show for everyone. It's a huge stage, stairs that that you walk down and just all kinds of stuff. We, We really enjoy it, and it's actually a lot of fun each year for the staff to kind of help share and come up with ideas for the stage but really that's a lot of her brainchild um, and things that she thinks of and she's always trying to top herself so the stage is phenomenal it's always kind of a fun reveal while we're at, at internationals to when the stage is finally complete to you know open it up for everyone to see and um, it's kind of a, a great experience and and i think the stage gets better every year and i'm excited to see the one for this summer so it gets better and better Also, we have our Friday night awards banquet, and that has been the case, I think, pretty much from the beginning. And there's a different theme each year, and that's where we give all of our optional awards and some of our scholarships and that type of thing. Last year, our theme was the Royal Oscars, and so we did kind of something fun. We did a red carpet experience. As before you came into the ballroom, we had a red carpet set up with backdrop just like you would see at the Academy Awards. We had... You, of course, at the beginning of the red carpet, interviewing the girls as they came in. And so each girl got to come down the red carpet, and we had photographers all down the red carpet taking pictures of them. They got to meet you. They also got to meet Jonathan Kane, who designed our opening number dresses. And so we've announced that we're doing something similar to that again this year. So we're working out the details of that and kind of excited about that. I can't wait. As a Royal International Miss title holder, what are some of the experiences they have enjoyed? It changes from year to year, but we always try to make sure they have some life experiences that they can take with them. One thing that we do absolutely every year is our international cruise. This year we went to Cozumel. It is a unbelievable time for the girls to spend together, to build a sisterhood, to just have fun together. We do lots of things on the cruise We, as far as photo shoots and that kind of stuff, lots of time spent together getting to know each other. Um, the girls have also done trips to New York City, to Miss America. This year, we actually did a new trip. We went to Nashville, three days in Nashville, doing some photo shoots, touring Nashville in the back of a monster truck. A, a lot of fun for the girls. They had a great time doing that as well. That'd be pretty awesome. Lots of bling sitting in the back of a monster truck. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was, it was a lot of fun. The monster trucks are owned by Big and Rich, and the girls, we pulled up to the place where we met the trucks, and they nearly lost their minds. And we had a great time just riding in the back of those. Of course, they draw some attention, you know, back there, driving through downtown Nashville. And we did some photo shoots in Photo Studio where they had just shot the cover of Vanity Fair with Nicole Kidman. They do lots of photo um, album covers. So the girls were kind of treated to, to a day in the studio feeling like, you know, the stars that they are. So... Um, It was a lot of fun. We even spent some time at the Wild Horse Saloon learning the line dance. So they had a great time. Why do you believe that pageantry is so important today? I think pageantry is important because it teaches them self-confidence. It teaches them to be able to speak in front of other people, the ability to interview with judges that translate, obviously, into the professional world. I think it builds confidence in girls to be able to get on stage and feel beautiful and and feel confident. But I also think pageantry is a lot like sports. Sports are important because they teach teamwork and they teach you to work hard for something. They teach you improve self-improvement. And I think pageants do the same thing. I think a lot of times pageants get a bad rap for just being something vain and, and very self-involved. But I don't think that's what pageants are at all. I think that what the girls gain from doing a pageant, whether they ever actually win the international title or a state title or whatever, I think is invaluable. I know for 
my perspective as a dad, which is the reason I actually got into it, is my daughter was one of the international role models for Royal International Miss. And when she started doing pageants, she was very much a tomboy. She didn't enjoy speaking in front of anyone. And uh, it just wasn't her personality. But in the short time that she did pageants, she blossomed into a young woman that I didn't recognize. She you know, learned how to put on makeup and felt good about herself on stage and learned how to talk to strangers and how to meet people and how to go into interviews. And I will never forget when she was in college, she called me one day and she said, Dad, I'm so glad that I learned how to do interviews and pageants because I just nailed my scholarship interview. And, um, and she did. And she felt great about it. And she learned that confidence through pageants, which if she had never done pageants, she probably would have never learned that skill. So they're vital to the growth of young women in, in our country and around the world. That is awesome, Jeff. I'm so proud of that. I was honored to present to you the Pageantry Spirit Award at the International Finals here in Orlando last summer. What does the award mean to you? Oh, my gosh, it means everything to me. And, and I very much appreciate that. Um, funny story, I didn't even realize that you were presenting it to me as I was standing on stage. I thought you were giving it to someone else. And I was super excited for that person as well. But um, it, it means everything because I think that what that award means to me is that it's given to people who give back to our glamour industry, to the pageant world, who are fun to be around, people who try to make the industry better for other people. And I try to do that, you know, on a, on a constant basis. And so to be recognized for that, it means the world and to be recognized on the international stage in front of all of the staff and the girls that I've worked with for years and then to be presented by you on stage. I mean, it was just, it was overwhelming. I'm not going to, I'm not going to lie. I cried a little bit. So um, I was excited about it and um, definitely a moment I'll remember for a long time. It was my pleasure and honor. If you remember, I got to give you an award before that. I do remember. I was kind of stunned on that one. It kind of threw me off a little bit. <laughs> yeah, we were excited to honor you for all of your years of, of giving back to the glamour world and pageantry and to be for being such a big supporter of Royal International Miss. I mean, you're always there when, when we call. And, you know, just like when we called last year to do the red carpet, like you were always willing to help. So we really appreciate that. And I will continue to do it. It is our pleasure. And from a standpoint of a family member of the original family of the glamour lifestyle industry, you know, I've grown up in the industry and I've seen it grow and expand. And just to see the growth of Royal International Miss over the past 10 years, a decade, where they started, where Sharon and you and the whole team are now, it's it's humbling and, and, it's, and it's amazing and it shows how important our industry still is today. I agree. Thank you so much. What do you enjoy most about the glamour lifestyle industry? Uh, I really think kind of what I talked about before is, is seeing that development of the girls. Um, I'm in a lucky situation in that because I work for, for a pageant system where girls do come back um, year after year, I have been witness to girls who came their first year and were really raw and due to pageantry, but had a great time and a great experience anyway. And then spent the next year getting better and maybe the next year getting better. Um, we have lots of girls who I cannot believe the growth in their confidence and their personality and even their presence on stage just from the experiences that they've gained over the years. We have one of our girls who won several years ago who no longer even does pageants, but she has set a goal to do community service in every all 50 states. She has an organization called States of Service. And she literally is going to every single state and doing volunteer service in each of those. So to see that affect someone and see those girls grow is absolutely why I love doing it. And let's be real, I like putting on a show. I like the production of it. I love the excitement of it. I love the excitement of the pageant week. So that's what I love about it. Mm -hmm. For those who are in the glamour lifestyle industry now or those who may be considering joining our wonderful industry, what would you say to them about considering Royal International Miss? I would say to them that if you love being on stage, if you love having a good time, if you love being kind and making a difference in the world by doing community service and being kind 
during the week of the pageant, getting to know other girls and develop sisterhood, that you should come to Royal International Mess. Um, I promise that if you come, you will have a fantastic time, and it will be a week full of events that you will remember for the rest of your life. Is there anything that you'd like to talk about that maybe I have not addressed? I mean, I just want to say that we love what we do, and I think that that comes through our product. We have a very small staff, but the entire staff is filled with people who are excited about what they do, who love meeting people, love getting to know people, and love making people happy. So I think when you have a staff that has that in mind, um, it translates into the product. So we're here to help. We're here to get girls, you know, ready for internationals, and that's what I would have to say about it. Okay. Is there anyone that you or possibly Sharon would like to recognize? I think there is a, a lot of people who should be recognized. We have uh, every year our list of directors grows. Um, we have started with just a bare bones group of, of staff members, and we still you know function with a very small number. But there are so many directors that we've now grown in different states and different countries who we absolutely couldn't do the pageant without. We have a couple of women who do a lot of the planning and, and stuff of our parties, which is Tanya Almond and Rhonda Bannister. Sharon's right-hand person from the very beginning, we have Robin Nelms, who she works harder during pageant week than, than anyone almost. She is working backstage and making all the cogs of the wheel turn, so to speak. Obviously, we couldn't do it without Sharon. So there's lots of people. And, you know, I don't know if you know, but Sharon and her husband actually are very busy right now with the COVID-19 thing going on because they run a medical clinic in Claremont, Florida. And their office staff even comes during the pageant week and helps set up parties and, and do stuff. So there are lots of people to shout out, and, and that they all are very deserving of it. So that, that's who I would shout out. Excellent. Any parting thoughts? I, I would just say that we, we love what you do. We love Pageantry Magazine and the light that it shines on our industry. We love doing what we do. We love providing this opportunity for girls, and we hope that continues for another 10 years. Well, thank you, Jeff. And today's very special Pageantry Podcast guest has been Marketing Director and Contestant Coordinator of Royal International Miss, Mr. Jeff Lee Force. Jeff, thank you so much for your time today. Absolutely. Thank you so much.